Hi guys, and welcome to my channel, Carp Fishing UK with Scotty P. You join me today on episode one, Carp in the Park. Um, right, so tonight I'm prepping bait. Um, so earlier on, I weighed up a kilo of hemp. A kilo of maize. And three kilos of pigeon conditioner. Right. I'm going to start with the hemp. And what I do is I just simply fill it up with some water the night before I cook it. Um, from the tap indoors and I just make sure that the hemp is completely covered in water so I know that it's going to take on enough water before I start boiling it it's almost done Good soaking of water. That's going to soak that up overnight. Probably let a little bit out of that actually. There we go. Plenty of water in there. Now for it to soak up and then for me to boil tomorrow. Now for the maize. Again, just fill it up with cold water the night before. Just enough so it can soak up and see so you've got some for boiling as well. Tomorrow. Lastly, lastly, the pigeon conditioner. Yep, just let that run for a minute. And that's it. All done and ready to boil up tomorrow when I get home from work. We're at Fairlands Valley Park in Stevenage, Hertfordshire. Um, as you can see behind me, yeah, it's a park lake, a local park lake to me. It's about um, a 15 minute walk if I was to load the barrow up and walk down here. Um, I haven't done that today. I've actually uh, come in the car, lazy little kid. So, you know, do what you gotta do. Um, it's an 11 acre lake and it's home to lots of different fish carp range, ranging up to um, 30 to 37 pound. Hi guys, uh, just a quick little update. Um, no action so far, a few little bleeps, but nothing landed yet. Um, all I'm doing now is just knocking up uh, some PVA sock with some pellet in. Yeah, um, I just use that on every cast just to protect the, uh, the end of the hook. Uh, so all I do is I just take a small handful of pellets, I place that into the tube, all right? And then I don't, I use the plunger, but I don't actually force it in because they can get stuck. So all I do is just like use it as an injection and just push them all through the tube, just like that. And then I just make sure I've got enough so they don't start coming back up the sock. Pinch it as well, that's it. Right, wiggle them down. All right, then you strip off enough, spin it around. Now I always pinch down where I want the knot to end up. So there, yeah, and that's my first knot. 
and I always double knot so I then create another knot just about a couple of centimeters up yeah not even that maybe just over a centimeter yeah so then my bag yeah my PVA mesh it's completed there and it is ready to be refilled okay right well like I said no action yet so I will see you soon um, if I have a fish on the bank if not I'll see you at the next update all right take care guys all right hi guys back with a quick update uh, just had a lovely screaming take um, 14 pound common fought really hard let's show him to you quickly yeah he had a, put up a really good fight took out my mate's rod actually um, and then nearly took out my middle rod but yeah right I'm gonna get this little chat back all right and I will see you if I have another carp or at the next update take care guys Guys, back. I've just had a double take. Um, starting off with this little tiny, um, little nine pound common. I'll just quickly get him up to show him to you. He's really lively. He's had a little bit of time to rest. So give me a second. I'll stay still. Wee. That's it, come on, calm down. lovely little nine pound common yeah took to a Bonoffi jewel with an alpha tour bait uh, boily um, right I'm gonna stick this one back and then I'm gonna get the uh, the rather larger one out and uh, and get him out to give you show you him as well all right 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 guys we're back with the second fish the of the double take. He went at 17 pound 10, yeah, and he also fell. Way, calm down you. And he also fell to the Bonoffi Tor Jewel, glow in the dark uh, Tor Jewel with an alpha, with an alpha boily. All right, all right, I'm gonna slip this one back. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all later on. All right. Mwah. Take care, everyone. <sighs> Evening, guys. I'm. Uh, I just thought I would uh, have a quick update while I make myself a cup of tea, a little celebratory tea, as you can quite see, and as you would have seen in the. Uh, earlier in the video um, I've just had a double take um, I was trying to de-hook the little small nine pound common um, and while I was unhooking her um, I could hear my clutch go on my middle rod um, and I'm gonna show you now once I've made this cup of tea I'm gonna show you exactly uh, what rig I use and the bait that I've used to catch it on um, right, put that in there. I'm using a, almost like a snowman rig. Well, it is a snowman rig, I suppose. Yeah. That's what I'm using, that's the bait. Yeah, so that is a Bonoffi glow-in-the-dark tour jewel. Yeah. There you go. It's got pop-ups on there, but they're... Well, they are a pop-up, I suppose, yeah. But they glow in the dark. They're called the Nocturnal Range. All right, and that is just on a simple um, multi-rig. Yeah, I've stripped back the coat in there, as you can see. 
and that's just a little loop that goes over the front of the hook I'll show you later on in the video on how to do that and I've got a quarter hooker a quarter kicker on there all the way through onto my coated braid yeah and then that is just an anti-tangle sleeve just to prevent anything from getting tangled up around the lead yeah right so that was a bit of a, a memorable moment that's my first ever double take so I'm and I'm glad I got to share it with you guys all right but that's my update now so um, unless I have anything else I doubt I'll be back on for another update before uh, tomorrow morning all right take care guys see you soon morning guys um, just a quick morning update um, I had one in the night I didn't get any footage of it, it it was a bit of a palaver to be honest um, it wiped out my middle rod and well I had to cut the line put it that way it was such a mess um, and I ended up having to literally land the fish by hand in the end um, my mate had to help me which was good job he was on on hand um, because like I say it was an absolute horrific ordeal uh, it took me about two hours to get it all sorted um, and get back out fishing um, but yeah so that's all the action I've had since um, the last time I saw you all uh, so yeah let's I'm gonna spin the camera around now and we're gonna have a quick look at the uh, at the lake itself so now I've spun you around as you can see this is Fairlands Lakes uh, this is my swim um, I will later on, once I've had a cup of tea and all that, uh, maybe around about lunchtime, uh, show you around the whole lake. I'm going to try and get down to swim one as well, uh, which is allegedly the best swim of the lake. Um, and we'll have a look. That's actually currently closed at the moment due to COVID-19, but we'll go down there and have a look at um, why and where we fish why it's the best swim in the lake and where we fish on the lake. Um, right, so I am fishing 14 and a half wraps and if you're new to fishing, I'll try and show you, uh, or if I get a chance, I will show you myself wrapping up um, using distance sticks so you guys have got an idea of what I'm doing. Um, but my first rod, where's me, there it is, is roughly on the left hand side, it's around about, somewhere yeah about there yeah my middle rod is if you see them two people on sat on the bench and sorry three people sat on the bench in a far distance so I'm about there with my middle rod 14 and a half wraps and that bin that you see in the distance that's my right hand marker yeah so I'm about here somewhere in the lake um, I feel like the fish are at the moment patrolling around um, it's, a, it's a massive bowl really so they're patrolling around in a circle um, between 14 and a half wraps where I'm fishing and the far bank um, so there seems to be a lot of feeding activity and a lot of shows over in that far bank um, especially this morning when I first woke up but yeah right well anyway anyway that's it from me. I'm um, gonna have a cup of tea and you can probably hear the kettle boiling now and stick a bacon sarnie on because I'm absolutely starving. Um, and then get some more bait out there. All right, guys. Anyway, have a lovely morning um, and I'll see you all soon. Take care. Welcome back to Carp Fishing UK with Scotty P. Um, it's lunchtime, so I thought I'd jump on, just give you a quick update. Um, not much has changed. Uh, I had to recast all my middle rod and my right hand rod. Um, my friend who's recently packed up and gone home now, he, uh, he had a lovely, lovely take, um, but he wiped out my rods and the gentleman next to me. So he was two swims down. Um, don't know how he managed to do that, but... Um, 
so yeah, so like I say, nothing else has changed for me. I've slung a little bit more bait out um, and uh, I've recasted my middle rod and my right hand rod. Um, I was hoping to get out and show you the lake uh, in this part, but as you can tell, it's raining. So hopefully, you know, as soon as this rain eases off, I will um, get back on and like show you the lake. Um, so yeah, so until I have another fish or, you know, I will see you soon. Right, hi guys. Um, I'm back again. The rain has eased off, so I thought I'd come out here and just show you um, quickly around the lake, and we'll even see if we can jump down into swim one, um, and we'll show you that one as well. All right, so I'm just gonna spin the camera around. Right, so again, directly out in front of me, this is my swim, yeah? Um, so what I was trying to show you earlier um, was that I am fishing roughly around about my right hand rod is about there my middle rod is probably about here and my left hand rod is about there i would say um i hope that makes a little bit of sense to you um but yeah like i say it's an 11 acre lake um it goes from about 16 foot in depth um up at the far end so that's that end down at the dam i don't know if you can see there's a few people fishing up there yeah um yeah so it goes to about 16 foot down there but then it slowly does level out and we're probably at about between seven eight maybe ten feet out in front of us there um from what I can tell, uh, I think we're about 10 feet. Um, all right, and then it goes all the way down to the bottom down there. I'm gonna have to go down because the bushes are too uh, thick next to me. I'm gonna have to go down to swim one to show you the rest of the lake. Um, so yeah, right. What I'll do is I'll join you back in a second. Right, guys, we're down at swim number one. Um, so behind me, you can see that there's a boating yard. Um, now, if you're fishing over in a disabled swim, which I'll show you in a second, it's good to get off. I don't know if you can see the green buoy. Again, I'll zoom in on that in a little while. Um, it's good to fish off of that um, green buoy because uh, a lot of the carp hold up uh, just in and around the jetty over there. Um, yeah, so right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you in closer I'm going to show you a little bit more of this swim. Right, so, as I said, I was talking about disabled swim a little while ago. Over there, you can see the park bench. All that is known as the disabled swim. Um, and it is known for that reason because it is specifically reserved for uh, blue badge holders. Um, you can book it uh, through the head bailiff, um, but if somebody with a blue badge does turn up, you have to vacate your swim um, and move to another swim. Right, so yeah, like I said, if you are fishing that swim, there's a green buoy. I can't zoom in anymore, unfortunately, um, just in the distance roundabout I'll try and point it out to you um, that's my finger. just there uh, and what they like to do is they, they cast over to there I've never fished this swim myself um, but yeah they tend to cast over there and I mean they can have quite a prolific night um, now this swim swim number one Now, swim number one, very, very good swim. Um, you'll get no sleep in this swim if, if that's what you're after. Um, down the bottom there is a waterfall, a natural waterfall, um, man-made, but what it does is the overflow from the other lakes that are up at the top end, 
that we're unfortunately not allowed to fish. Um, when it's raining, that flows all the water down and it does reoxygenate all the water so a lot of fish hold up down that bottom end. Um, there's a few little buoys down there uh, that are specific spots um, and if we get a chance tomorrow, if it's a nice day, I'll try and get down there and show you um, the spots. But people tend to fish about two rods down there normally um, and just a good handful of boilies or a good scoop of um, spod mix. Uh, but I am quite new to fishing. I've only been fishing for about four or five years, maybe six at a push. Um, so I'm a little bit unconfident with my underarm casting because you're not physically allowed to cast over overhead. Um, you have to under underarm cast. Um, and like I say, I'm a little bit unconfident in it. I'm, I'm slowly building in confidence. Um, and I'm a little bit worried that I'm going to tangle and then end up be fi my fishing be ineffective. Um, but yeah, so I tend to fish just one rod down there off of the second white boy but like I said I, I will show you that tomorrow because there's a rope down there with little white boys on um, and we've marked little places um, then if you're fishing two rods down there the other suggestion is between the fifth and sixth white boy um, which is another known spot to produce a lot of carp and I mean down there is where one of the biggest carp is known to come out, uh, Terry, who has tipped the scales at uh, 37 to 38 pounds, I believe, maybe even a little bit bigger than that. Um, but yeah, so like I said, I would only fish one rod down there at the moment. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna show you some other little um, spots on the lake that I, I've had fish off of before. Sorry about that, just one of the bailiffs just popped down. He thought I was, uh, he thought I was trying to set up in the swim. Um, right, yeah, so where was I? So where I'd put my other two rods would be again, 14 and a half wraps, just out towards that white boy over there. Um, if I find that I'm not having much success off of the white boy, I tend to move one rod. Yeah, just the one rod. And I'll show you now where. So that orange boy where the seagull is sat on top and I've I've had a lot of fish off of that spot. Um, I tend to, I don't tend to clip up on that one, I just tend to free throw it um, and just to the right of the, uh, of the actual boy. Um, but in saying that sometimes if I see fish showing on the left then I will fish to uh, probably a rod length to the left of the orange boy. But nine times out of ten, I'm fishing towards that white boy just there. And when it goes off in this swim, I'm telling you now, you lot would be in for a sleepless night. Um, and again, like I did say, a lot of the big known fish tend to come out of this swim. Um, and that's why it is the most popular swim on this particular venue um, so nine times out of ten if you're coming to fish this swim then you'll get to the car park and take take a bucket out of the car and run down here and try and get this swim before anybody else does I'm just trying to get down to see see if you can see them boys you can just about make them out it's a bit difficult though. Um, let me get a little bit closer to the edge of the swim. Oh, sorry about the camera work here, guys. There we go. I'm just about straighten up. So, just down there is, like I said, where the waterfall is. But what I also did forget to mention earlier on is over by that blue boat, around about here somewhere in the water, um, if you're looking down at the waterfall, it's off of the eighth white buoy, I believe. There's an aerator that pumps oxygen into the water. Um, 
again, you'll find that a lot of the carp hold up there because of that reason. But yeah, right. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna end the video there now because I'm running a little bit low on battery, um, and hopefully, I'll see you very soon with a nice big carp in my hands. Take care, guys. Right, so all I've just done there, guys, is I've just topped my swim up a little bit um, with a little bit of extra bait. I've not had a take for, well, since last night. So, I mean, I know there's bait still out there, but it's nice just to freshen it up, ring that dinner bell, see if you can entice them back in. Um, so I set myself a limit of about five to six bombs, um, and they just go randomly placed over, over my spots. Um, when I'm, when I'm not getting a take so yeah fingers crossed tight lines I'll see you all in a little while right then guys um, I was just thinking about what I'm gonna do next um, today anything I can change or anything like that um, so I was just about to prep one of my old hooks that I'd been using throughout the session and as you can see You know, I mean, you wouldn't want to stick that anywhere, would you? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this all down because I'm going to keep some of the components of it um, to use on my next rig. But I'm going to show you how I make this particular rig. So, put that to one side for a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some camo tech. Fox Camo Tech Soft 20 pound coated braid. I'm not gonna strip the coating back. I know I have on that one, but that's an old way of way that I used to make them. Um, so all I'm gonna do is make a loop. Yep, around about that sort of size. And I'm just gonna make a simple overhand loop knot, if I can do it properly, the way I want it. Come on, your little so and so. There we go. Sweat that down and pull that nice and tight. Yep. Right, so the next part, I'm gonna trim the tag end off. I will pull it all tight again in a minute. Oh, come here, little son. There we go, I need to sharpen these scissors try to use braid scissors if you can get hold of them I know you can get a, a pair of gardener braid scissors off of Amazon 
So I'm going to strip this down now so I can nick some of the components off of it. All right, so stick that. What am I looking for? I'm looking for me hooks. They're beside me. Right. So I've got the Fang X Micro Barb um, Nash hooks, is what I like to use. So I'm going to stick the loop that we've just made, I'm going to go through the front of the eye of the hook, so that way through. Yeah. It's a little bit tricky, so bear with me. I do stab myself a lot. Typical, no sooner than I turn the camera off, I get it to go through first time. Yeah, so I've stuck it through the front of the eye of the hook, as you can see, so it's going to the back of the hook. Yeah. I'm then gonna take my bait and swivel. Yeah, I'm gonna use this one again because it's got a nice bit of uh, bait floss. Normally I'd refresh my bait floss, but what I'm finding is the fish are just literally nicking the bait. Um, before they've even taken it, you know, uh, before the hook's even set. So I'm using um, a bait stop. Right, uh, pull that down there, like so. And then you have your hook like that. So all I've done is I've placed the swivel onto the uh, hook link and then place the end of the hook link over the front of the uh, over the point of the hook and then pulled it down tight yeah then I'm going to take my kicker I'm going to place it down the tag end yeah and I'll force it over this knot which can be a bit there we go and I'm gonna pull that tight over the eye of the hook. I'll just test that, make sure that it flips over in the palm of my hand every time, which is what it's gonna do. <coughs> so then I create, then I'm gonna find that other hook link that I've just stripped down. And I'm gonna steal Oh, yeah, bugger. I'm gonna steal the tail rubber. Yeah, the anti-tangle sleeve. That's the best thing about these rigs, you can, well, most rigs, you can strip them down and just keep reusing the components until they're non-usable anymore. All right, now I'm just gonna feed that down. Doesn't matter where that lands. I will sort that out in a minute. Right, so I don't want it too long. Probably, yeah, about that's a good length for me. Um, this bit is a little bit more trickier. I'm making a smaller loop. It's gone through. Come on. There you go. It's gone through. Pull that down nice and tight. There we are. Oh. Now just get my rig tightened until. And just lock that off nice and tight. There you are. There's no chance that's coming undone now. And then I trim the tag end and I'm left with 
my rig that will look like not like that obviously on the bottom because I've got that looped over there now it's going around the wrong bloody way come on there we go my rig just like that yeah Evening guys, um, just a quick little update. Um, no carp action unfortunately, but I have had two bream um, since my last little update I think, or maybe one extra since my last little update. Um, the rain is still upon us. Um, just a little bit of a drama with me Rod going back out uh, while I was um, going around my distance sticks and I clipped up as I was reeling in the wind caught my uh, line took it off the distance sticks and just literally made a mess so I had to start again there uh, but didn't cause too much of an issue got the rod straight back out um, the rod's back out on the spot now so fingers crossed hopefully not long now and we'll have another carp to show you but if not I'll see you in the morning for an update all right yep I've got one in the sack um, I just sacked him quickly in the margins just um, so I could set up the camera so I could show you guys absolutely stunning common took to a pineapple embutanic acid uh, slime ball wafter I think it's about half past 12 now midnight, half past midnight Let's lift him up for you and give you a look at him. Absolute stunner of a carp. Put up an amazing fight as well, especially once he got into the margins. Yeah, look at that. They are gorgeous here. Mwah. All right, I'll spin him around, show you him the other side. him the other side 17 pounds of absolute pure brute all right thank you very much all right let's stick him back good morning everyone I uh, hope you can't be lot are all doing really really well this morning um, just a quick update from me I had that one in the night, the uh, 17 pounder. Um, after that, they were just playing musical chains with my blooming alarms, I swear to God. Every five minutes I was getting But if I lifted into it, there was nothing there. Um, I'm just making myself a brew, so I'm gonna crack on with that. And uh, hopefully I will see you all in a little while. Take care. Bye-bye. Tight lines. That's it, it's going. It's been going. What size right there is? 20? Well, I suppose I'll have to tell on it. It was ripping line off. Yeah, I had it go, man. <laughs> He's under your Who's line. Who's that? How's it way? How's you under the line, yeah. Hang on, it's video that way, I'll go and I'll try and take my bail armor. Oh, it's a nice car, oh, yeah. It's a nice size. Yeah, it looks about a 20, doesn't it? How bad is it, though? 
Fucking hell, still crying. Yeah, still going. That's putting up a fight, that one, eh? Yeah. Look at it. It's got to be a 20, isn't it? Or more. Hopefully. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's got all right, that's 20. Caught. Go ahead. Yeah. Bosh. On an alpha. Amber knocky. Glow in the dark. Is that what you've done? Sure, it really. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely work, guys. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, no worries, mate. Right. We're back with. Wee! Stay still. He has. Oh. We're back with fish number six of the session. He's, uh, he's a little bit smaller than the others, 11 pound. Um, caught again on the Bonoffi and uh, Tor Jewel uh, Wafter snowman setup that I showed you earlier. Um, again, 14 and a half wraps out. Put up perhaps an, an absolute amazing fight. But yeah, I'm just gonna get a few pictures. Um, thanks to a couple of lads just down the bank, got a bit of footage of me fighting him. Um, See, so yeah, I'm gonna get a few pictures and slip him back. All right, look at that, lovely. All right. Evening, you khaki lot. Uh, right, my last update now. As you can see, I'm pretty much packed down, ready to go home. Um, I've taken a few bits up to the car, uh, so I haven't got too much to. Uh, to pack down when it gets a bit darker. Um, I'm gonna stay until probably last light, which isn't too far off, probably another hour or so. Um, hopefully I can get another carp for you on the bank. Um, if not, uh, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Um, not sure where that's gonna be yet. Please go over to the Facebook page, uh, join my group and obviously all of my information and locations will be posted up on there um, yeah so just to recap on the session uh, we started the session off with uh, a lovely 14 pound uh, common carp um, then we moved on we had that double double take um, of commons the nine pound and then the biggest of the session the 17 pound 10 common um, then had a bit of a dry day yesterday up until late evening, night time, well, midnight, as you know. Um, you know, so yeah, no action until midnight where we had the 17 pounder. Um, and then today, again, a little bit of a dry day up until about three o'clock, three, four o'clock, um, where I had um, a lovely 11 pound um, common looked so much bigger in the, in the uh in the lake I, like you heard in the video i thought it was a 20 pounder um it fought really really hard um if i was to pick a favorite fish at a session i'm gonna have to go with a 17 pound 10 but purely because that's my first ever double take um so yeah i'm gonna pick that one the 17 pound 10 um common carp for the double take is my uh, favorite fish of the session um so yeah so like i say i'm gonna sit it out here for another hour or so see if i can get another fish on the bank for you um but if not talking to the devil
Uh, not sure yet. I wouldn't like to guess after that last one. I was just doing my final uh, goodbye as well. make that seven guys if I can get this one in the net like a mirror Angry. Up on that circuit. Oh, it's a lovely, lovely mirror. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> In the net. Just. You're the help, sir. Oh, no, I'm all right, mate. I've got her in. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Right guys, I've got him all unhooked. I've got him weighed. Um, again, not as big as I thought. I thought he was gonna go bigger. Um, 
but are lovely nonetheless. And they're all just as welcome as each other. Calm down, mate. Calm down. A beautiful, lovely mirror. The first one of the session. Again, fell to the uh, Tor Bates Alpha Boily with a um, glow-in-the-dark Tor Jewel topper. Um, right. Yeah. I'm going to get a little bit more spod mix out. Um, probably stick this rod back out and see if I can get another one. One last look at him before he goes back. There you are. That's it. Right. Um, I've decided against sticking the rod back out. I'm going to start packing it down now. I've got two rods left in the water. Um, I'm going to soon, within the next half hour, 45 minutes, I'm going to start pulling them in as well. Um, but wow first time i mean literally two three minutes before i was actually trying to record a live take um and i mean how lucky can i be recording the end ending of my uh, first episode and to have a live take during that brilliant um i can't thank um a gentleman called dave and his friend lee uh, for helping me record the last few and take the last few pictures as well. If it weren't for them, um, I would have been pretty stuffed. Um, yeah, so as you can see, the light is fading quite quickly. Um, I've just put that fish back. I'm gonna start getting the rest of the stuff on the barra and then start thinking about um, packing down my rods. But guys, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it. Uh, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, get your notifications on, right? And please leave me a comment, let me know what you thought of my video. I, I could really do with the feedback, um, you know, to let me know where I'm going wrong, going right, what I need to keep doing. Um, I'd like to again say thank you to Tor Bates. Uh, thank you, Tony Smith, uh, the mastermind of Tor Bates. I prefer to call him the Willy Wonka of, um, of Bates, to be fair. Um, I will post a link in the description below for you to be able to, uh, to head over to their website and have a look at their bait selection. Um, comparison the I don't think I've got any out but you've seen me covered in the slime uh, the blue slime 899 a bottle you can't go wrong brilliant brilliant stuff a bit of slime and stuff mixed together there uh, yeah so right then guys from me it's a goodbye for now and tight lines keep on the bank and keep me up to date on Facebook. Let me know what you're catching, guys. I love seeing your catch reports. All right, take care.